everybody. Uh, welcome to today's PAN class. Uh, PAN stands for Proactive Nutrition. I am going to be your host, Kelsey Baez. I am the Wildcats Nutritionist here at Texas State. If you're not familiar with uh, some of the roles that the nutritionist uh, within Wildcats plays, I do one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling. I obviously do these PAN classes. We do um, participate in the webinar services, so or series, the webinar series, excuse me, and just a variety of things. So basically, any time that I get a chance to nerd out on nutrition, I show up because I, I love to. So um, just a little bit about our services and um, just something for you to be able to reach out to if that's something you enjoy. Today's style is a little bit different. So if you're watching this, you know that it was pre-recorded. Uh, we had to do something a little bit different for this for, for this class, but I do wanna go ahead and just jump into our, um, our, our recipe today because it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I also wanted to just share it with you because this month we're talking about proactive nutrition. We're talking about um, specifically like meal prepping within this and cooking in bulk. And this is my go-to recipe. So this is something that I personally have created and that I do a lot within my household. I've been doing this kind of for years. So it's a little weird to get behind camera, show it to you, figure out what the measurements are and everything. But I really think that I crafted something that you're going to enjoy. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to share the recipe for you. And something to be aware of is that the ingredients that I'm using, I'm also going to be using most of these ingredients on our Friday recipe as well, so that um, you can see how versatile this is. So why I will cook in bulk and then make multiple meals with it throughout the week or the month or whatever. So um, let's go ahead and let me share my recipe. I am gonna tell you that I don't have a picture of it yet because I'm going to have to cook it. I'm cooking it now and then I'll change this recipe, uh, this recipe image. But today we're making an easy meal prep creamy cilantro chicken. Mm, you can't see it. Oh, you can't see it. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're making the creamy meal preps uh, uh, cilantro chicken bowls. Now, I usually make these chicken bowls, but I've actually never made the creamy cilantro sauce, but for some reason, I thought it'd be good to add it in um, for this because it'd be a quick, easy um, fat to add in because there's not a lot of fat in any of the other components. So um, we're going to jump in by making two pounds of chicken breast. Um, you can do chicken breast or chicken thighs, but I do recommend that they're boneless and skinless. It just makes it for an easier process whenever you're dividing up all your food uh, into however you're wanting to prep um, or if it's just for a meal. And then we're going to take our chicken breast. We're going to cover it with water. I'm saying that's about half a cup. It might be a cup. It's just going to depend on how big your pot is. We're going to shred some caddis, ca cabbage. We're going to also um, have four cups of some brown rice. We're going to quick pickle some purple onions. We're going to make um, something called habichuela, or I just called these beans, but it's like a Puerto Rican Dominican um, style of bean. It's something that my husband grew up on and um, we've adopted it within my, my family, uh, our, our little family that we've created because they're delicious and they are very nutritious. So um, you see all the list out here, uh, the onions and the garlic. And then um, we have the creamy cilantro sauce with uh, some Greek yogurt, lime, and cilantro, salt and pepper if you want it. Uh, and the nutrition facts are really well divided for this. So the recipe as I gave it to you is for four servings, and that's going to be 470 calories. And within that, you're getting 30 grams of protein from your meat, your beans, and the yogurt. You're getting uh, 13 grams of fat, primarily from that sauce uh, that we're going to be making. And that's a good, that's a good amount for, for a, a meal serving. And then uh, about 60 grams of carbohydrates. So it's going to be delicious. Uh, I know that because like I said, I've, I've made this a lot. The only difference is that cilantro lime sauce and how can you go wrong with cilantro lime? This is what I want to know. So let me go ahead and show you today for the chicken. What I've done is I've taken chicken breast and they were really thick. So I filleted them in half and then I've just added water so that it can just barely cover it. And then I'm gonna cook this in an Instapot. If you're not familiar with an Instapot, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you a little bit of what, what I do here. So 
it basically pressurizes and cooks your meat for you so it keeps it nice and um, moist. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do pressure cook. I've got it set for high. And then I'm going to, um, do, we'll do, We'll do high for 15 minutes. It says 20. It'll be done. It'll be done in 15. I just like to overcook it a little bit. And then we're going to. Okay, so now that beeping, what's happened is it is telling me that the, that the pressure, the pressure cooker is on and it's going to start building up pressure. Once pressure is built up inside of here, that's whenever it's going to start cooking for the 15 minutes. So it actually takes a little bit longer than 15 minutes to pressurize. And, and get everything start to cooking, but um, this is really fast. If you don't have a pressure cooker, no worries. You can use a crock pot. I've done that for a long time. Again, the biggest thing is that you wanna spread out your meat evenly so it's not really overlapping on each other and then covering it with water um, or chicken broth if that's something you want. And then you just let it cook in the crock pot all day. You could even boil chicken if you don't have either one of those options. And then you just boil the chicken for I'd say probably a good 20, 30 minutes with a lot of water and just keep checking on it because you may have to add water to it. So shredding chicken, really not that big of a deal. Um, and I like to do shredded chicken with meal prep because then we're able to um, use it throughout a different, a, a lot of different things and it's going to retain moisture and I'm not adding any seasoning or anything to this because then it's more versatile for whatever I want to use it for. So if I'm going to make like pulled chicken sandwiches, or if I'm going to make tacos, or if I'm going to do enchiladas, or whatever it is, I can add those flavors in afterwards once I have my, my uh, shredded chicken divided. So a little bit there on the chicken. Um, I want to go ahead and pin the stove so you can see the stove, and we're going to start making our beans. Now, the recipe, as I showed you, it has had four cups of rice cooked. So I have my rice cooking now. That's um, a cup and a half of, of raw oh, 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 or um, uncooked rice, which will then multiply into four. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm heating this up to a medium heat, and I'm going to add some oil into my pan. The recipe I said was about two tablespoons. I don't really do a lot of olive oil, at least not at first. I'll watch how my onion and my garlic are cooking, and then I'll decide from there. So I'm going to give this just a minute for the oil to heat up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add in about a cup of onion. A cup of onion is basically about the size of a small onion or like half or maybe even a quarter of a large onion. What I cut up here is a large is a, a relatively large onion. So I'm probably only going to use about half of this because again, that'll be about a cup. I'm looking at my olive oil to see if it's ready for me to add in my onions. I do not have my garlic in it yet. And what I'm looking at in this olive oil is to see how quickly it's moving. You can see it's still kind of thick. It's not, I want it to move almost as if it's water. And then that's whenever I'm gonna feel comfortable with adding my onion into the oil. Um, we are getting close. It's still a little thick, but let's go ahead and get this show on the road. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put my onions in here and I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and use all that onion. That might've been like a cup and a half. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this out. Oh, no wonder my stove was on like no heat at all. It was on like a two. So let's just give this a minute to let it cook up. And I'll talk to you about some of the things I chose for this recipe and how I was able to essentially create this recipe, which is going to be um, used for today and also for Friday. And I did it for $20, actually under $20. It was like $19 and a couple cents. Um, but some things that I did was, for instance, I, whenever I bought the chicken, I looked at the different types of chicken that were there. And as far as um, what I was looking for whenever it came to that chicken was I was looking at everything from fresh to frozen and quantity sizes. And what I found in this instance, I was looking, 
I was comparing everything at on the same metric, but you have to pay attention whenever you're looking at um, how they're how something is being listed because like my chicken. Um, my chicken was sold like per pound and then the frozen chicken was per ounce, I believe. So then I had to look at and divide that out to see like how or multiply it out to see how much it was per pound. And what ended up happening was I bought a value pack that had that was about four pounds worth of chicken and they were really thick and um, that ended up being cheaper per pound and um, it's going to last me longer. So um, it may have been, I believe that compared to like the two chicken breasts, it was like the two chicken breasts were about $9. And then the pack that I bought was 12. So if you look at it just on cost alone, it's a little bit higher, but whenever you think factor in the fact that I'm going to use all of this throughout the week for um, multiple meals, the, and you divide out the cost, it's actually cheaper um, to, to buy, buy the, the chicken in bulk. All right, we can hear the onion dicing here. Um, I didn't show you guys my onion trick this, this go around for dicing the onion because I show it a lot. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely check our previous uh, pan cooking classes to be able to um, learn that skill. But I thought it would be more beneficial to show you how I slice an onion because we're going to quick pickle some onions too. Um, so let's go ahead. These are going to cook a little bit longer. And then I'm going to add in my, my seasoning. We're going to go ahead and do the jump. If you've cooked with me before, you know that we always have to jump around in my kitchen just to pull out. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and show you how we quick pickle the onions. So I have distilled vinegar in here. It's about a quarter cup, half a cup. And then I have some sugar in here. And then I'm going to take a purple onion and then I'm going to I'm going to thinly slice them. So let me show you how I slice an onion. By the time I get done slicing this onion, we will go back over to those beans, check on the white beans that we're cooking. All right, so first thing I should have showed you is that I took off the, the um, part where all the leaf comes together and I'm leaving the root. Any rooted vegetable, whenever you're cutting, dicing, slicing, whatever, always leave this piece on because it's what's going to hold it together and not have it slip around as you're, cut, as you're cutting. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut my onion in half, going straight through the middle of that root. And I am going to take off the, uh, the outer layer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep my knife parallel with the, the face side of the onion that was already cut. And I'm going to cut these relatively thin. And we're probably only going to use half this onion because it's a big onion. Um, yeah, let's see here. You notice I'm keeping my hand back and away from the bottom of the blade. And then I have minimal waste here, so I can just go ahead and throw this away. I'm going to take this and just break, break in break apart the onion just roughly, because I'm gonna also stir this and put it into this, this vinegar mixture. And it's gonna make um, a really tasty onion. Oh, you can't see my face right now, but actually this onion is very um, potent. I am crying. You'll see it in a second, I'm sure. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my onion and I'm gonna move it around in this mixture and I'm gonna let it set. I may, ideally everything's sitting underneath the liquid. It is gonna break down a bit. So that is helpful. Um, I actually, I think because of the size of my onion, I'm gonna add more, I'm gonna add more vinegar and sugar. So given the amount of the onion that I just put in there, this is probably going to be more like a cup of vinegar. I don't have to have it completely submerged, but I want it to be, um, I want it to be at least halfway submerged and that was not happening. Okay. And then that's going to change our sugar. I probably added another tablespoon in there, maybe a tablespoon and a half. 
but that's just to help soften these these onions. It's not necessarily going to be making your onion sugary. It does give the onion a little bit of a tangy taste. Okay, so we're going to let these sit, and they'll they'll break down, and then they'll they'll basically quick pickle while we are making everything else. So let's jump over to the beans so that we can get them soft and starting to go. These are looking and smelling great. They're starting to get softer and I can tell because they're shiny. They're starting to have, like, um, have, a, have a little bit of a shine to them as opposed to when I first put them in. So that is my cue to add in the seasonings. And I'm gonna add in the garlic as well. The garlic, I used fresh garlic because again, that was another way to save money. I I compared price between fresh garlic and um, and like pre pre chopped pre minced garlic, and it was a uh, hands down. It was it was a no brainer. So the minced the minced garlic for about a I think it was about three ounces. It was about a dollar twenty eight. Versus I could get two whole heads of garlic for a dollar two, I think it was. Now, of course, you could also use garlic powder. Um, I like this fresher taste. It's really whatever you have on hand. Uh, so let's go ahead. I might turn this down a little bit because I don't want to lose it. Okay. I'm going to spread all my onions so they're more even. And I'm wanting my onions to be mostly translucent. We are going to be cooking the beans. So um, because we're cooking the beans or boiling them, it's going to soften our onion as well. I'm going to add just a little bit more olive oil, a tablespoon more, just to get a little bit better of a sauteing feature on, on here. So we can cook my onion. And I'll go ahead and start making my, or getting my bean prep. So we're using uh, pink beans. You can use whatever beans you like. I just, for this recipe, I find that the pink beans taste a little bit better. Um, I, I don't know why, they just are. But I've done them with black beans, pinto beans. But we're not gonna drain the liquid in them. We're gonna dump it just straight into the mixture. Uh, if you are someone that is watching your salt content, you can buy low sodium, or you can rinse these beans and then replace it with a broth. That's your choice. Uh, I like to add this in. And sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I'll add more sauce by adding a little bit extra water into the beans so that I can um, use it for whatever I need to do. Traditionally, as I told you, my husband um, grew up eating eating these beans because he's a uh, he's Dominican. Traditionally, what you do is you make these beans and you make rice and then you put these green beans with the sauce, uh, the sauce from the beans, the liquid, on top of your rice. And that is a go-to. I have to be honest, the first time I ever uh, saw it, I thought it was really interesting to put beans on top of rice like that. Um, but now it is my go-to. It's absolutely delicious. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, mix these up, and then we're gonna add a little bit of apple cider vinegar at the end of us cooking these. I'm gonna put a lid on it just to help this cook a little bit more. Let's see here. That's my lid, perfect. So I've got this cooking on about a medium, medium high heat. I'm gonna check on my rice. My rice is looking great. I think I'm gonna turn that off, turn that off. Um, sometimes for my meal prep, if I'm, if, if I'm meal prepping in bulk and I don't have necessarily an hour to cook, I might um, do, I might change a couple of things. Like I might buy pre-cut onion or I might, um, I might uh, buy prepackaged rice that I don't have to cook myself. 
So uh, let's move on. We've got the beans cooking. We've got the right, the chicken. It still has about 10 minutes left on, on it being pressure cooked. So let's go ahead and let's um, slice up our cabbage. So our cabbage, this is it. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the outer layers of it. I like to do this just because they're usually, they're usually pretty beat up and they're a bit dirtier and, um, it, and they're, they're usually a different texture. It's just, I don't know, something I've learned to do, something I, I prefer to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cabbage and I'm gonna cut it into quarters. Once I have my knife, I'm gonna cut my cabbage into quarters. Notice I've got my fingers pulled back away and I'm gonna just cut it in a way that it goes right through the middle of that stem. Cause again, that is a stability, that, that maintains stability. And I'm just quartering this as previously mentioned. Now let's talk about why I chose to buy a whole head of cabbage. I chose to buy a whole head of cabbage. Um, whenever you look at the fact that there's pre, you can buy pre-shredded ca shredded cabbage now, which um, is phenomenal. I buy it off, I buy it frequently. Um, but whenever you're looking at it from a cost standpoint, a bag of shredded lettuce is $1.62 and a whole head of lettuce is $1.65. So what that means whenever you look at it, whenever they, whenever it's priced out is that it's listed that shredded, shredded cabbage is about 20 cents an ounce. And then if you look at the whole cabbage, they tell you per pound and the whole cabbage is 60 cents per pound. So whenever you divide that out, you're looking at um, about 0 0.0375 cents an ounce. So whenever you compare 20 cents to 30 cents, it's kind of a no brainer that you're getting a lot more for your, uh, for your buck. So um, let me tell you, I went and I removed the center, the center head of the cabbage now because it's gonna be a little bit more, it's, it's packed in the way that I cut it and it's gonna be more stable. And I'm gonna just go and I'm gonna cut very thin slices. Some people have um, some people have like processors that can shred these, or even like mandolins. I just find that using a knife is easier. It's quicker, and in terms of the mandolin slicer, I would say it's safer. Mandolin slicer. Uh, I actually have a permanent scar on my on my palm of my hand from. Um, from mandolin slicing to shred cabbage. I was making coleslaw. So I'm just going ahead. I guess this is more chopped the way that I've decided to do it. I like, I. this is just habit, sorry. Um, I chop it a lot too. If you want it to be shredded cabbage, you just don't go through and cut, the, cut it in the opposite direction like I did. And now is whenever I will rinse I will rinse my cabbage. So we used a quarter of that cabbage. Um, the recipe says if you half of the cabbage, so I'll do it again and show you uh, what I meant about that shredded portion. So again, this is a quarter. I'm just gonna take that head. This is called the head of it um, and just remove it. Toss it here. And then thinly slice, and you can see this is creating like a shredded effect. Perfect. I think that I dice it after I shred it because it's easier to eat. But I know myself, that is usually what it comes down to. If I have to compete to add it onto my plate or something like that, I'm generally not gonna do it. So now this is the part that you can skip if you don't want shredded lettuce. And often what I'll do during meal prep is I cut actually the whole let the whole cabbage and then I'll dice up like some romaine and then I'll make my own pre pre mixed salad that I can use throughout the week. 
So then um, with that pre-mixed salad, I'll add like some shredded chicken that I've already made and I'll, I'll experiment and play with different, um, uh, different sauces to, to bring, bring different components to it. Cause I mean, it gets boring eating the same flavors every day, no matter how delicious they are. Okay, let's go ahead, add that in here. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in some water. Let it soak for a little bit. And I'll use my hands to reach in there and toss. Let's see, how are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. Perfect. And that chicken's got about three minutes on it. I'm going to leave it sitting in the pot for right now until uh, we finish everything we need to do here because it can just continue to cook a little bit longer. No big deal. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make our sauce. I'm gonna put everything into a blender here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add, this is already pre-washed, but I'm just gonna add this whole bunch of cilantro in it. I'm not even gonna worry, well, you know what, I'm gonna chop the ends off. Not the whole end, just the, the last little last little bits because they, um, they get a lot of face time, let's say. All right. So I'm not, you could cut it. I'm just going to rip this and I'm using the stock and everything. That stock is so rich in flavor that I want to make sure that I have it, have it included. All right. And then we're going to use, so I said four, four ounces of, um, of, of Greek yogurt. This is technically five, but a small container. If you're if you buy yogurt in bulk or like a big container because you're going to use it for snacks throughout the week, then um, it's basically a half a cup that you're that you would use for portioning. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm dumping in this yogurt. Uh, again, this is a low fat plain yogurt. I definitely recommend doing a plain yogurt. Um, just I think that adding in additional flavors would be a little competing. Maybe you could do like a lime flavored yogurt. Uh, you do whatever sounds most best for you. But for this recipe, we're going to go plain. And then for the lime juice, I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze two lime juices in here. We'll see how it mixes up and then we may add in some water. First thing that I want to do though, is I want to zest a lime. I feel like whenever you add zest and peel into uh, into a sauce or really anything, it gives it more of that component. So like if you're zesting orange, you taste more orange. So I'm going to zest the peel of this lime and I'm going to just zest it directly into my, my blender because what's the point of dirtying something up? You know, let's be, let's be efficient here. I wouldn't do two limes because the zest is really potent. I mean, like you're really gonna, it's gonna have a strong flavor to it. It strengthens the flavor to it. So however much you add in is your choice, but this is probably gonna equal out to about two tablespoons, maybe even three. That beep is telling us that the chicken is ready. So we zested one line. I'm going to cut off the quarters here and I'm gonna just cut it in half and I'm gonna do one more. A trick, um, by the way, for limes, if you get a lime and it's really hard, it's very dense, like you don't see much give there. If you lay it down and you take your arm flat or you take like a jar or something and you roll it by applying pressure, it softens up, it, it creates a mechanical force which is going to soften this up and then your juice is really just ready to go. Uh, I have lemon juicers so that you can put in and then you squeeze and it dump, dumps it out. I, for limes specifically, lemons are more more seeded, but limes because they have less seeds. I put this side up so that I can feel any seeds that come out, and then I just let it get squeezed directly into my into my sauce. All 
Okay. Perfect. There's one. It is a little messier this way. I will say that. Definitely make sure you have clean hands. That is an important component of this. So I just find that it's faster to use your hands and then it's one less dish because most of the time those uh, lemon squeezers are ceramic and then you can't put them in the dishwasher. And I lived several years without a dishwasher and I, um, I have since learned to appreciate and use my dishwasher as much as possible. Okay. And this lime portion of it really is to taste. So I believe in the recipe, I said uh, four tablespoons, which I think this is honestly equating out to, but it's really a taste thing. So you could go really conservative on the lime and then always just like taste it as you mix it. All right, let's throw this away. Let me wash my hands since they're, since they're super juicy. And then we're gonna mix up this, um, we're gonna mix up this sauce. All right. It may need a little bit of water. We're just gonna play around with this. All right, so I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna put my blender on here. This is just a standard blender. It's not a high power one or anything. I'm gonna mute myself while this goes just because that's a lot of noise right next to the computer. So one moment. Y'all, I was not ready for the amazing smell that was gonna happen while that was blending. Okay, so let me show you, I put this, so I pulsed it and then I put it on crush. Those are the features I have. The just blending wasn't fully featured. But if you look, it's, it's rolling there a little bit. Let's try some, let's see if it's a consistency we want. Cause it's kind of hard to tell right now. It needs salt. And honestly, it needs a little bit of sweetness to it. So whenever you get your rest, whenever you have the recipe, um, I'll make sure to add that in because as I said, this is the um, go around. This is the trial run and then you will have the more perfect thing. I'm just gonna add in about a tablespoon of honey. There we go. All right, and then let me put the lid back on. I do think I'm gonna add just a little bit of water because it's kind of thick. It was just the littlest touch of water. I mean, I would be, I would say it's probably about a, two tablespoons at the most. Let me mute it and blend again and we'll critique that sauce again. Okay, so I can tell by looking at it that it's more of a thinner consistency like what I want. And that's so good. I would definitely add in the, um, I would add in salt. I would add in the honey, maybe even a little bit more honey. I am gonna add in a little bit more salt. I think what happened is that I maybe, maybe do like half a bunch of cilantro just because it's kind of got a bitter taste to it, which it's fine. It tastes good, but it's also kind of bitter. So play around with that to your palate, but I would say honey and salt, just a, just a little bit of that's going to help. All right, let's see. We've got all of our components prepped for the most part. So let's go check on our, on our beans. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, it's smelling so good. It's smelling so good. All right, I'm gonna turn this down low. 
All right, and I can tell that these beans are pretty much ready. I can tell that because they've swollen up. They've, they've swollen. They're, they're larger in size than when I originally put them in there. And as I'm moving my spatula around inside of here, I can really, I just feel that they're soft. I can feel that they're softer. Sometimes I'll cook these like slow for a really long time. You can't overcook a bean really, but sometimes I'll like split open like that and they're just really soft to the soft on the palate. That's delicious too. Um, for the sake of time, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, turn off the heat on it. Add in the vinegar. This gives it a little tang. Um, but that brings in a whole other dimension to the to the different flavors that you get. So it's like smooth, it's kind of creamy, it's uh, kind of earthy from the blend of the of the spices that you're using, and then that vinegar just kind of lightens it up. Actually, it's it's a really good combination. Now, I also often will add in diced uh, diced peppers into this. Actually, I very frequently do. So, um, if you do, if you do want to add in more of a vegetable component to these beans, I recommend adding in some diced up peppers and sautéing it with your onion. So you'll reduce the amount of your onion. So maybe instead of a cup, you do half a cup of onion, and then you'd add in like half of a uh, of a bell pepper, and that really um, that that's delicious as well. So let's go ahead. And let's assemble our meal. And it looks like we actually meal prepped in under 30 minutes. Uh, so this really is a great way to go. I will say the only thing is that my, because we meal prep so quickly, the onions aren't as pickled as I would want them to be. So maybe the best is pickling them overnight. But these are still going to have a really good flavor. They're just going to be a little bit harder, and more crunchier. Uh, but that's okay. That is okay. Cause well, for me, because I, I like purple onion, I'll eat them raw. So, all right. So let me make sure that I follow the recipe based off of what I recommended on the. I'm pretty sure I remember. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to shred the chicken. That's important. Let's cover up these beans so that they continue to cook a little bit. Let me move this over here. So I guess it wasn't under 30 minutes, I'm sorry. So let's move this over here so that you can see inside. see inside the pot there we go all right quick release so right now this is set in a uh, pressure mode so i'm going to release this i move it away from my cabinet so it doesn't steam up my cabinet and potentially warp it so i'm going to give that a second and we're going to try something fun today that i've never done but i've seen but i've seen it done so traditionally whenever you uh whenever i have tried the chicken I have always um, used just done two forks, to, but apparently you can use beaters, which fit perfectly in your silverware um, compartment in your in your dishwasher, and then you just turn it on high, and then it shreds the chicken for you. So let's fact check that. Let's see if it actually happens. I'm kind of curious, but I thought it'd be fun to watch together. So let's let's try something new. Okay. So you can see that chicken, it's a really nice white pink color. I'll go ahead and just stab it. Yeah. Yeah, that chicken's that pork's going in there, no problem. The longer you cook it, the easier it is to shred. So Take that as you as you want to. Let's see. Let, let me. Yeah, we'll just go for it. Oh my goodness, it's working! Y'all. Oh, 
my life has changed. Oh my goodness. Yep. Yep. Uh, definitely do that if you have the time. I am going to um, eject these feeders so that they don't get that chicken right on there because I think that that would be a good way for it to get stuck and then you have to scrub really hard. So let me just pop those in some water. I am so impressed. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you can see we have this shredded chicken. It's ready to go. And again, like I said, I like to some sometimes like theoretically I'm showing you this is this is just two pounds, but I will cook all four pounds of chicken in here and I'll just cook it for a little bit longer. So maybe that's 30 minutes or 40 minutes to do it all. And then I can divide it up throughout the week. And then like I said, I'm making chicken enchiladas, I'm making uh, pulled pork, I'm doing wraps. Um, and then I'm adding seasoning as I choose to whatever I'm cooking, but this is a huge uh, time saver. I, I'm sorry, I just can't believe how shredded this is. I am just, I am in awe. I mean, it makes sense, but also I am so impressed. Okay, so back to portioning. Portioning out our food since we have our shredded chicken now. Need my sous chef. All right, so I say half a cup of rice, half a cup of beans, two cups cabbage, three to four ounces of chicken, topped with cilantro and pickled onions. That's pretty easy. All right, so what I'll do, I'll move you. I'm sorry, there's a lot of moving today. It's just part of, part of the cooking process, you know? but hopefully it's not making you nauseous or anything. Okay. Rice perfectly cooked. I'm gonna go ahead and do half a cup of that. And I'm just using an actual measuring cup. That's quite a good bit of rice. I'll show you so the bottom of the bowl already made. So if I'm meal prepping, I put these just directly into containers my beans, I'm gonna go ahead. I like to use my, you could use a slotted spoon if you want. Most slotted spoons are already uh, measure out half a cup. This, I like to I like to have some sauce on it. So I'm gonna go ahead, add in some of those beans on that rice. Oh, looking so good. All right. And then for the shredded chicken, so you could actually do like, two thirds of a cup, and that would be about uh, three ounce, about three ounces of chicken. I know, so this was two pounds, so I'm just gonna use a quarter of this chicken, and that should be about right. The cool thing also about shredded chicken is that it looks like a lot, as opposed to like, if you look at three ounces of chicken, it's pretty standard on what a, what a portion size is, but whenever you shred it, it look, you can really divide it up and get some flavor throughout all of it. Okay, so that's about three ounces of chicken. And if you watched me separate that out, I didn't even take a full quarter of that chicken. So this probably, this may even be a little on the low side. All right, let's add some cilantro lime seasoning. See what that, that's gonna do on here. So I usually do the quick pickle. The only thing that's new is the sauce. All right, let's add in. I'm going to get some of these onions from the bottom because they will have been sitting in the vinegar a little bit longer. I think I'm going to actually break it up. Yeah, I would say that these quick pickle, I usually quick pickle and it's about an hour. I would say a quick pickle is an hour, so the 30 minute mark just isn't. Isn't it really long enough? You'll get the flavor, but you just won't get the texture. The texture is not right, but that's okay. All right, ooh, I just tried some of that vinegar sauce. It was good. All right, so let me go ahead and make sure that I get a little bit of a bite of everything. I'm gonna have to blow on it because this is all really hot and straight out of the pot. So let's see here. 
didn't get much rice. Let me try some more rice. Okay. Mm. Fine. This is really good. Um, I like the texture of the chicken with this. I think that you can feel the chicken. It's a little bit more grainy, but it's got really great flavor. It's delicious. Um, well, the bowl has really great flavor and it's delicious. I'm tasting a lot of that bean flavor. The onion, the onion has the right flavor. I just wish it was a little bit softer texture. Um, and the cilantro lime sauce is a good addition. I actually like it a lot. I would add more um, honey to it to make it a little bit sweeter though. Mm. Or even maple syrup. But honestly, this is delicious and it, it's so versatile. So at this point, you're more than welcome to log off, but I will tell you, I'll just list off a couple of things that I will do throughout the week with the different components of this. So one thing I like to do is I make wraps. So I'll buy like a, I'll buy a, like a certain type of tortilla, whatever one I'm enjoying or whatever one's on the sale. And I'll layer that with some mashed beans. I'll strain the beans and I'll mash them up and I'll put that into there, into a, into the tortilla with um, some of the shredded chicken. I'll usually add in some of the pickled onion and then uh, some greens. So maybe, oh, we forgot the cabbage. I'll add in cabbage uh, or a mixed, a mixed vegetable of some kind. Let's see. Okay, that was a cup. I said two cups of cabbage, so let me add in another cup. I can already tell you, I'm gonna like this. Sometimes I toss my my uh, cabbage in olive oil as well, a little bit of olive oil and salt, and and mix that in with everything. Let's see, I'll give another bite since I didn't give it with a cat. Tell you what it was like with the cabbage. I can tell you my bowl is really full. This is a very big bowl of food, so I'm not gonna be hungry afterwards. And we're perfectly balancing out. Like we've got fiber, we've got protein we got fat this is going to help us feel very full mm -hmm. big bite sorry the cabbage complements the flavor of the of the pickled onion so you've got the crunch that's matching with that pickled onion, but it makes it, um, I would say a little less sweet. And then if you add in that extra honey to the, to the um, sauce, I think it, ba it balances out perfectly. I think this is good. You could also just eat the cabbage on the side. I do that too. But anyway, um, that's, that's this meal and also uh, a wrap that I make. So. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I will see you all on Friday.